Today we're going to go over uh, offsets four dimensions, which we kind of talked about through other classes. And I'm going to have you guys get into groups. Uh, and just get in three groups. Just three groups. So maybe you guys, two guys. You want to get guys, that's cool. Well, 
to say so. I guess here, we could just be one of the first to say that this some of the other things we bring on to get more 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 yeah, I mean, a final legal standard. Final legal discussion for me. And all the other big things you've got. This is a toy. Yeah, and so they're like, you know, probably one of the other five points. So based on those particular kinds of cultures, how it's Thank you. 
Para los dominicanos, ¿cómo es el caso de la
The misconception about Trump, I think, of people is how successful the businessman is. You know, people think he actually owns the buildings. No, he owns the brand. For some of his properties, he owns a percentage share. But a lot of times, he may have a lease. Uh, but there's very few properties who hold their own properties. For the most part, it's a licensing. Hey, you know, I want to license Trump brands. You know, it's prestigious, it means luxury. That's what's going to draw people. Golf courses, high rises, just <laughs> Hey, but I told you, most CEOs, most leaders, high leaders are sociopaths. But that's what, that's what allows them to get to uh, their position. Because people don't really care at that high level. Right? It's, it's, it's too much. You care about us. You care about like that. But for the most part, people are gangs, so they're trying to blame the gang. Which is so important for this class, because we deal with socialization, how do people think, how do individuals categorize themselves, how do they group themselves. And if you know that, and you can look at it and see it, I ain't moving chess pieces. But I know about the things we would have that would be more successful. I know the things we were going to do this. For the most part, you know you're going to hire somebody. Probably a few months ago. Before you actually hire. So always remember business. What I learned throughout the MBA is business. If you can apply psychology to all the great things you're learning about business, accounting, finance, marketing, international business, leadership management, you have a great advantage. You've got to understand how humans behave. Then you can predict what their next thing is going to be. Predict exactly what they're going to do. And if you're going to predict what their team is going to do, what their group is going to do, what their country is going to do, everything is going to do. But for the most part, the most, thing, the most important thing in this country is economics. We're about the economy. So the economy deals with you know, what are people want to do based on this, this, and that. So most of you know, there's an argument for basically saying, what kind of biz what business field encompasses everything known as technologies that encompasses marketing, finance, but more importantly, it encompasses human behavior. That's what makes it kind of so unique. So you think of the Federal Reserve, Ben Janaki, all those guys. Uh, they're kind of specialists in human behavior. Put on a monetary platform. <laughs> you know, if you love us, very familiar with you love us. No. That's not. Which is way of looking at things is looking at society as like a computer program. Computer stuff. Simulation. What would you just talk about? You know, if you just check everything, you can make it. It's the same thing with media, right? The media is essentially a program. It gives you information, maybe they misinform you, maybe they steal it, maybe they throw in bad information in there. This is also a way to make you react, make you private. Make, make, make the economy go most of the time. 
maybe bigger time than you want to for the other one. It's not a good time. Even politics is uh, highly psychological. Like a man can feel that you're going to go, regardless of if it's true or false. Yeah, that seems to be it. So, in conclusion, psychology, if you can apply it to what you're learning in the school, you have to break it down. Because a lot of people don't apply it. You've got to understand human behavior, why people behave the way they behave. Then you, then you can change the way that they think. Who has an action? Can you see that? Uh, everybody done? All right, so the question is, how can we use Halstead's four dimensions, power distance, uncertainty avoidance, individualism, and masculinity to gain insight into leaders' support and relationships around the world? What are some examples? Um, so we mentioned like uh, Germany, for example. They're very much um, like, on your pause because you have to do the computer task. Um, or in Japan, they work in clean groups, so everyone has more of a say. Um, or the influence in decision making. Uh, the second one, uncertainty avoidance. He said, like, France and Italy um, really make business or do business with people, um, companies that they've done business with before or that they know of. Um, so the risk is lower, whereas um, in the United States, all about the money. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then for individualism, we we have read an article in one of our other classes about Japan and how uh, they say that they have jobs specifically to give people, or they have companies specifically to give people work. So their whole idea is that they everyone has a job so that way they can progress in their country. Um, and it's kind of the same thing in Latin America where everyone has a job. Uh, we talked about last class, like you don't ever fire someone who's kind of just keep them, even if you devote them, but like, no one ever gets fired because that's the way that they live. Um, and then, compared to the U.S., where you pretty much do everything to get ahead of yourself compared, and don't worry about anyone else. Um, and then, masculinity, masculinity, we talked about uh, Mexico pretty much, and how it's kind of like, it's a sexist culture, um, guys are the center of everything. I read an article for one of my other classes that, um, Women are expected to just stand behind whatever the man says. Like they don't get their input. The guys do all the parenting and all the things, um, and the woman just kind of sits back and lets the guys do it. And it's just because of heritage and history and things like that. So, for say, going back to what you said about Japan and Latin America giving everyone a job, um, <coughs> does that allow for more competition, for more progress as a whole? I say here where a lot of people are unemployed, which makes getting a job even more competitive, but we're still the number one country in the world economically. I, well, I understood their concept a little bit as if everyone has a job, everyone's working towards the same goal so they can work together to achieve a higher uh, whatever it is. Uh, the way I think of it is that Japan is considered a developed country and now it's a developed country and it's competing with US companies and they can even be considered doing a lot better than us. If we look at, um, what is it? Why is it those parts? Uh, Toyota and Subaru, with the Subaru store in Japan. Um, oh, Honda. And so compared to like Ford, they're doing possibly a lot better than us. So, their collectivism might be leading them to be more competitive 
because they're working together to where the United States is all about making money and making sure that they're meeting their highest quota. Makes sense. I think Japan is becoming more uh, kind of quasi individualistic. You know, people are focused on themselves and not having kids anymore. And then with that, they're giving them a job too. I mean, that's going to help a lot. Here, it's like we don't care about fire anymore. Even though we promote the individuals. But for Latin America, not as much because they're still very heavy, uh, religious, Catholic, kind of traditional, but a little bit of family. So individualism is not promoted there. But if you're still getting a job, I think it's a good thing. People go part of something, which overall helps. Uh, so whenever we try to classify, uh, you know, all the different citizens in our country, you know, but uh, we said for uncertainty avoidance in Central America is uh, very high. In uncertainty avoidance, they just like, you know, they're not sure that, you know, it's going to be successful, they're just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Where others, like India, they're just like, you know, more willing to take more risky uh, opportunities and just, you know, go ahead and just do it, even if, it, you know, even if they're not sure that you know, we're going to have this kind of big shot. Power distance, we say uh, Japan and China, it's kind of a more vertical oriented, you know, power distance where they're like, you know, okay, this is the CEO, he got, I mean, he just said whatever he said, like, you know, it's, it's, it's probably power distance where, like, you know, uh, there's kind of like a boss. Well, yeah, you know, it's like a bossy kind of environment. Uh, where in America, it's just different because it's like a more horizontal, where it's like more teamwork or, you know. I mean, besides the individuals, uh, individualistic culture, it's just like, you know, doing business and work, it's just teamwork. Mm -hmm. Individualism was selective, and said American for individualism. And I mean, that's pretty obvious that, you know, people in America say, ah, oh, they, I mean, never more represent themselves, you know, they represent anybody else. Uh, I think with a hint of uh, kind of inclusion, because everything's in teams and in corporations, right? Everything's in small teams, but you mm -hmm. still promote individuals. Uh, where in collectivism, I always said Thailand and Korea. Uh, and most of, uh, most of Asia, kind of, you know, like, you know, they're all collectivist cultures where they all care about the society and how they, you know, contribute to the society and they say we, they don't say I. <coughs> uh, and we kind of decided that Mexico was kind of in the middle, like, you know, collectivist and individualistic, kind of, like, you know, they're more like family oriented, but like, you know, Everybody just want to have a job and, you know, be better in their lives. Yeah. <coughs> um, we said that uh, Saudi Arabia is a pretty masculine culture. Uh, so, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty male dominant culture where, like, you know, we kind of feel women are subordinated to, to men mm -hmm. in some way. And for feminine, we say, like, Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, where like you know women have the big say and it's like you know it's kind of just like you know roles are reversed. Yeah, you're saying Africa's more feminine. Yeah, well, I didn't I didn't know if it was applying at all, but I'm doing like a project right now on Mali and Western and South, Southern Africa, and it's basically like um, the older women are usually in charge of like the finances of the family and yeah. making big decisions stuff like that, and they're also like the wise ones, so you go to them when you need information. Yeah. I mean, I think Africa's in North Africa, it's predominantly Muslim area, so it's probably, probably different there. Then you get the Southern Saharan, it gets different with the tribes that respect the old women, and you come south, it's like, you know, they don't respect the men, but it's like South Africa. Oh, uh, can, can you just give more examples about different cultures? I mean, like, uh, what, what is the difference between them? I mean, I know, like, you know, uh, a masculine culture is like, you know, more dominated, more male dominated culture. But how feminine dominated culture would be? Is it something like France, Italy? I mean, like, um, 
would be more like the United States. Because you have to say rights is power, right? So if you have rights, then it's power. And that is kind of the power system. And you say women have are not able to do this, women must do this, women are not able to do that, then it's predominantly masculine uh, country. And you say women have the same opportunities. If they get there, they get there, if they don't, they don't. Then you can say that's uh, more feminine. Uh, but I mean, I mean, is it, I mean, in the United States, um, it's both the same thing. Men can do this, and women can do this too. So why? Is but that but the, no, see, the, particularly deals with economic opportunities. Women can make as much money as they want to. Yeah, there's still gender-based things like with the NBA, but now we have the WNBA, right? We had uh, women can drive, women can dress how they want to dress, women can move up, get as much education as men, et cetera, et cetera. So what it really looks at is opportunities. If in other countries, they don't provide the opportunities for women. It doesn't exist. It's against the law. Uh, or even if it's not against the law, it's an unwritten law. It's just a cultural law, the social laws. So it really just the opportunities and predominant economics. <laughs> because in other side, you have the man who is only able to get the majority of the economics, obviously women are going to have the families, have the babies, and stay home. That's just going to be their role. Because they're not going to have the finances to do otherwise. So they're not going to have the finances to make choices for themselves to stay home. I want to have the family owners. So, I mean, predominantly democratic societies, you could say they're more feminine. And then there's other countries where it's a little bit of both. Um, which is, I don't know, a topic, but <laughs> these things are complex because they deal with social tension. So, for example, we say Afghanistan, male dominated, or would you say they have the independence? Right? Maybe girls can't go to schools, girls can't go past certain this, this, and that. But when you say, are there a lot of feminine characteristics? Probably. Because if you look, there's a very high degree of homosexual behavior, predominantly among the boys. Um, but it's not talked about. So, what I'm saying it's not written in law, but it's part of the cultural, cultural law state. Because, number one, you can't work with women. You cover that. So obviously, if you hang around with boys and with feminists, they're not. So that allows for a lot of different kind of you know, cultural dynamics and stuff like that. But that's why I mean, it's really complex. But we're just going to stick to be as general as possible here in this uh, overall. But that exists everywhere. I mean, that exists in Africa, Sub Saharan Africa, too. There's a lot of. Uh, when you see those type of cultures, it allows for other things socially to happen. Child soldiers in Africa, child rape, stuff like that, very high degrees of it. Once again, it's not fun. Uh, for Mexico, so also think about it like this <coughs> organizations mean just that, an organization. No matter if it's legal or even. So you say for criminal organization, say an international, we can take a class here on terrorism, we can take a class here on international drug organization, criminal organization. Um, it would be the same thing. The same leadership, cultural distance, these social things apply, and that's what they use. We use it for fear, we use it for tactics, in order to give rules to people. So in Mexico, Kind of what they have there from power distance is how the perceived relationship between leaders and subordinates to transfer over to the criminal organization. The <laughs> same as certain parts of the Middle East, where Iran sees their leaders, they worship their leaders. Their leaders, they essentially like almost worship their leaders. Then you have to say people are willing to do anything just based on that structure because it's a belief system. 
Hence, why you would get an exorbitant amount of vitamins, not your typical vitamins, what we call hypervitamins, because people feel that uh, essentially it's a helplessness. If you're not the boss, you're, sen you're essentially helpless. You follow the rules. And that's when you get kind of those things that spiral out of control. Mexican drug cartels. You might get ISO, ISIS. You might get this, that. And other things too. It's not just those areas, but it happens all around the world. The triads in, in Japan and uh, the Yakuza in Japan and in China, stuff like that. So. Uh, okay, next. What you guys got? Um, I just want to be said that below, filters are meant to be flexible. They have two correct ones that may be more at home, like really to jump into new things. So we said the United States is a good example because generally we are more willing to like take our new tasks or if something's wrong, we like to express our feelings. We're more flexible. And somewhere where there's hives or they wouldn't, we said things that actually in the news that place in my case study that we did where it was stated that the boys didn't want to deliver bad news to their bosses, like they didn't want to deal with the conflict. They wanted to feel like their boss was like family almost. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like they're gonna avoid that if they don't know you. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic for employees and managers to look at. Um, if they're more the employees are gonna be more hesitant and like what you think was that here? Do you think something like that helps, or does it? Like uh, heaven? Say if you're not willing to tell your boss that what well, exactly is going on. I don't think that helps, but I'm also very. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard for me to like picture that. Mm -hmm. But like given the, what they were saying, it was like they have to feel comfortable. Like their manager, once they do that, they'll be more willing to deliver that. So it's like the manager has to understand that they have to look at their body language, they have to look at their facial expressions, and like manage the news. Because mm -hmm. if they look upset when the person tells them, the person's going to be more of a to talk. So it's like they get one shot and they react to it. <coughs> like a manager here might like they use that language and they kind of get upset and storm off. The person's never going to talk to them again. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It's interesting. So, power instance, it's like both parties. I said Ireland was one. You know, the people, everybody just wants to be friends with everybody. And they kind of carry over until they do business. Like on the street, even strangers feel completely comfortable just approaching other people and striking a conversation, operating out. Like everyone's, no one really looks at someone as a business. They're in Ireland. And somewhere where it's high, hard, it's just a fire or um, Japan. So there's more of a vertical hierarchy. People are getting their job. They don't really look to like, maybe go too far, mm -hmm. up and down. Um, there's that idea of populism, but still there's kind of like, this is our role, this is what we do, our kind of has a role mm -hmm. and they fill it. And in places like Ireland, it's kind of more westernized like here. Kind so of you think Ireland is more like collective like this society? Or um, I, it's a hard one just because of their economic situation. They kind of have to get together given Brexit and everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. But I think the way they do the school in there is interesting, like even when you start school as a freshman, you think of that and you go straight from it. Mm -hmm. Here we're given like opportunities to pick different things and four majors there. If you don't start your major your freshman year, you're not gonna finish. Mm -hmm. It's like you're guaranteed kind of like a job they to a point system, so based on your grades in high school, everyone is applying to a different college, it increases or decreases the points. And based on your testing in high school, you have a certain number of points. If you don't meet the category for this school, if you're too big smart to clarify for that program, you're going to have to make a different program. Mm -hmm. So they kind of like beat people out. So my think it's like a mix of collectiveness and individuals. Like if you're allowed to win, but you have to like be good enough to win. If that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Don't remember what's your done back. Is, is, um, is a lot of choices for alternatives good in a business? Say for employees, say for customers. Individualism. So we said in the United States, we're individualistic because people are independent. 
uh, take initiative, risk takers. Uh, and we want to more risk takers? I think there's more risk takers here. Uh, that's what I was saying. Like, you think, okay, we live in this capitalistic, democratic society uh, with a lot of choices. It's the amount of choices we have here, say, for product services, um, all these different things. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or is it just relevant? Mm -hmm. You're running a company, you can give a lot of choices or alternatives, or you just kind of you limit them. What's more effective? I think in terms of the customer, it's probably better to have a lot of options because you get to choose. But for the company, it's better if it's kind of like down to two choices because there's a great possibility of them picking you over someone else. Do you think you lose the like, business identity if you have these choices? You're kind of like adding that. I don't really know what they're even selling, but they're selling. Yeah. Like, if I think of Parker and Gamble, like, I, I know the company, but what can I actually think of all the things that they sell? Probably not. They don't live in the jail, right? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you don't have a start to make it the way you want to Yeah, I was saying, like, if they had proper camera on everything, trust me, it would not be proper camera. But they have a segment product with and product with All right, we won't focus too much on that in a long time. Uh, what's the point of all of this? As leaders, as future managers, if we're going to be we're going to be doing globalization because in my time, I guess, uh, we saw the advent of technology taking off the way it did. you guys, in your lifetime, you're going to be building globalization every single day. The world's going to get smaller, 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 smaller. Every day. So, as a leader, as a manager, in global context, you need to understand behavioral traits. Behavioral traits of individuals, which therefore leads to groups, which therefore leads to society. If you're able to understand it from just a uh, simple like binary you know, of how men and women in, in the culture interact, then you can transfer that to large society in order to make business decisions. The umbrella just follows the human resources, particularly within a company. Uh, they deal with these things. In which case, you may work in human resources at some point. We talked last class about social identity, how people perceive themselves in the world, how they bracket and categorize themselves based on race, gender, membership, and things, uh, their associations, their affiliations, who they are. <laughs> We want to try to understand intergroup relations, um, kind of built on social identity itself, categorization. That particularly builds on individualistic society where people start to categorize themselves into new things. So you got to follow those trends to understand uh, what are the new trends of self categorizing people. We have a lot here in the United States, there's a lot of new categories. You want to follow those trends. That's a large new market. Right? People say, I belong to this now. I describe myself as this now. And obviously, you want to cater to that trend and say, I'm getting a jump on it. These are people that I'm you know, uh, seeking to uh, do business with. Obviously, with that, you can look at group cohesion and give motivation. We talked last class about. Benefits and punishment. How do you punish people based on their um, social dynamics? How do you get the benefits to people based on their social dynamics? What will these people appreciate more? You're able to retain them with that information. Um, you're also able to build a culture to where people just kind of understand what boundaries. You know, the employees understand what boundaries are. Uh, you look at social influence, which is somewhat uncontrollable. Um, but you want to make 
adaptations and changes based on that. We live in a lot of places in the Middle East. Well, I like to call it, I guess, the Americanization of everywhere in the world. We have places in India, we have places in Japan. People are becoming more like the United States. They're starting to really grasp on individualistic, I want to dress this way, I want to have this, I want to have that. They're starting to look at the alternatives and options. And all these places are becoming more and more like the United States. So which is a problem for us? I would just say, but it's, it's a problem for a lot of people. So you look at just basically the politics happening in this country. People are frustrated a lot. The United States is not going to be the superpower, the superpower that it has been because it used to be the brick, Brazil, Russia, India, China. Now it's like 40 other bricks, 40 other emerging economies. Why? People are getting less religious, 